Great. So we've, we've discussed so far technology, mobility, the future, uh, the smarter future of planets and industry. Uh, but now we want to focus a little bit on customer facing, right? You're an organization. Uh, new media is changing the way that you communicate with your clients, the way you manage those relationships, the way that you listen to what they're saying on Twitter. I'm watching this Twitter all day long trying to understand what everyone is saying, including that the hall is too cold, and I will fix that. Uh, but so I would, uh, I'm happy to introduce our next moderator, Alex McNabb. He's uh, director at Spot on PR. Uh, uh, we're very happy to partner with Spot on PR again this year. They're an awesome organization. It's very switched on. And uh, he's going to be leading a session on social media, listening, and customer relationship management. And I invite our speakers, uh, Mustafa and Fauzi, to join us as well at the, on the session. Good afternoon. Uh, can Twitter play nicely during this session, please? Um, I'm going to be joined on stage by Mustafa Bilga uh, from a Turkish company called Semanticon. Mustafa is just going to get a microphone on. Uh, and Fauzi Rahal um, Thank you. from um, Gray, in Middle East, North Africa. Thank you. So, Mustafa, meet the audience. Fauzi, meet the audience. We're going to talk about social media monitoring. And what I'm going to try and do is ensure that we don't talk about a subject you all know so much about that you, you're all second guessing what the panelists are going to say, and, and it, it's boring. So, we're going to try and break some ground. What I do want to do is open it up to the room as quickly as possible. Um, firstly, I'll ask both of you respectively, um, what are you doing about social media monitoring? What's the approach that you're taking to it? So, Mustafa, you first, because you're, you're a company offering this service. 600 million websites in Turkey? Uh, no. 600,000 websites. 600,000 websites in Turkey. That's more realistic, isn't it? Yeah. And, uh, and a million websites total. Well, uh, three years ago we started this business, but why? Because the thing is the reality. Uh, we believe that the social media is the real thing. Because the people are just talking about the reality, they are talking about themselves. The people are the real, the conversation are the real. So this is a big issue and this is really very important for the brands and for everyone else. Uh, for instance, for the research companies, they are just coming us and some, some research companies even come and do the researches. The traditional ones are just the old-fashioned ones. Are you finding that companies in Turkey are very quickly adopting social media monitoring? Are they taking it seriously, or is it an uphill struggle for you to convince them to invest in it? Yeah, yeah. We, well, for the time being, we do not have to convince anyone. People are just coming to us. And people are just saying in Turkey, it's, it's the case, people are just coming and say that, well, the social media is very important. We have 40 million people, 40 million Turkish citizens who are in social media and they are actively using it. So we need, we need you. That they're just coming us. So the, the, the market for social media monitoring and the social CRM is just very important in Turkey. Okay. Um, super duper. Then let me ask the question of you, sir. What, what are you doing in that space? Well, generally, the services we provide to our clients, and I'm coming from an advertising, uh, digital advertising background, <clears throat> revolves from everything from actually um, working with listening uh, agencies and, and organizations, uh, like what Mustafa is doing, to be able to create the content or more or less create the actual keywords um, to start listening into the conversations, to receiving um, various different, um, you know, more or less, of analytics from our clients, and then analyzing them to be able to take action or write the, str the next strategy for our next social communications tool. Um, generally speaking, in the Middle East, it's no longer a requirement to convince your client to do listening. They're all aware of the fact that they need to be listening. They're all aware that even if they're not present on social media, that some people are still talking about them, and they need to know what to do, especially if they don't have a social media page, actually. Uh, it's interesting you should make that point. Uh, who, who here is from, uh, traveled in from Dubai? How many of you are aware of the water brand Musafi? Um, because Musafi's had a bit of a nightmare week. Um, the 17th of January batch of half litre bottles was contaminated with bromate, which is a byproduct of chlorination or ozone filtration. And Dubai municipality took a, did a total recall of that product from supermarkets in Dubai. And Nisafi's response, I was very interested in, in, in this, and I, I actually Googled Nisafi to try and find their website. They're not on their own first page of search results. Their website, uh, which is www.nisafi.com, those of you who are on online, is a salutary lesson on why using Flash for a website is dumb. <laughs> because the website is Flash, it's full of little butterflies and bugs and beetles flying around that show us how natural water is, but they're actually not discoverable on the search. 
And their pub public reaction has been a PR statement saying, Musafi water is safe to drink, we care for our customers. No reaction whatsoever to the huge outburst of concern on BB networks, on Twitter. So if a company and a brand as important as Musafi in Dubai, that, that famously sophisticated market, is neglecting not only SEO and proper website construction, but social media as well, you, you guys seem unusually positive to me because from my experience, half the companies in this market are not investing in this stuff. I'm not saying that people are aware of it. I'm saying people are aware of the fact that they need to do it. Whether they do it or not is a different story. That's and then when they do it, if they actually listen to it or not. Yeah. yeah. Or actually react to it or not. Exactly. So what are you finding with your clients? When your clients are seeing the, the online howls of outrage, what, what, what's their re response to it? Well, generally, unfortunately, uh, from my side at least, um, our clients are, are more, more or less totally aware. Um, multinational clients usually show you what they want to do, more or less. They have these PowerPoints that just come from abroad, packaged, and they're like, how do we implement this locally? Um, local clients or clients who do not usually have uh, a social media policy or more or less of, a, of an awareness of what they need to do would then require a, little, a lot more work. Um, there have been situations where some of the clients are, were, were, were very wary, especially when you're talking to the marketeers of, of, uh, of the industry because they're more of one-sided way of, you know, we put a TV commercial up, we put a banner, if somebody doesn't like it, we don't want to hear about it. Um, today it's not the case anymore, clearly. So it's. I don't see it as bad. I mean, you get an SMS from Etisola telling you subscribe to your BlackBerry on your BlackBerry. That's a bad CRM platform. That's not being able to filter out your data either. There's a lot of situations where a lot of information is acquired, and that's also because we're becoming too demanding. We want, we want our operator, our telecom, or our electricity company, or any single, or um, you know, Emirates, if I'm flying Emirates, or airlines or hotels, to know everything about us and to be able to cater for our needs every single time. What we don't understand is that they're not being able to keep up. So the demands from the consumers are way higher than any brand can cater for at any given time, and that's why listening is very important. So playing devil's advocate uh, for a I second, think, though. Uh, Sorry, can yeah, uh, uh, I think uh, I can give some more real-life examples. So how companies are just coming to us is uh, automatically answered with, with these examples, I suppose. For instance, a very interesting thing. A board member's niece is just tweet some very special future plan of a top 50 company in Turkey. Can you, can you imagine that? A niece of the board member just tweets a future plan. That plan may be one million dollar. One billion dollar. I don't know. So with this monitoring stuff, you can just take all kind of issues. For instance, and, 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 and another, another example can be a plant in the Saudi Arabia is just closed. Why? Because their just production is very, uh, very simple, but they do uh, lots of uh, problematic production line they have. So the products are not 100% are not uh, as, as good as in Turkey. So they just close the plant. But how, how can they see that? They can see if even if uh, they, they have some agencies and the other stuff and the newspaper, it's, it's, it's not enough. If you just monitor the social media or the digital media, you can just get this stuff. They just close the plan after this analysis. So, okay, okay fair enough. I, I'm monitoring social media, I'm looking at the conversation, and you're having your conversation. Why do I care what you say? What, 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 is, what, is the, what is the concreteness of this stuff? It's just flim flam. You know, people tweet, oh, I hate the guy on the stage, and the second I walk off the stage, it's over. It's not the end of my career, it's not the end of my reputation. It was just a tweet. On Facebook, it's just a like. So why, why do I even need to bother about this stuff? It's never just a tweet. If it's just a tweet and it goes away, I mean, it's, it's like somebody just stand up right now and says something. You don't know if they're going to say something that is smart, intelligent, demeaning, offensive. You don't know. If they say it, and it happens, it so happens that nothing else happens afterwards, then great. But if, it's, if they say it and they voice out or trigger um, a reaction from somebody else who might agree with them or might disagree with them, that's when you start affecting and rolling out that, uh, that effect. So yes, a tweet individually will never affect anything. So well, look, but look you, have, you have an Arab yeah. Spring. Looking back at my, friend, my friends tweet. at Masafi again, I mean, uh, in 2009, they had a 500,000 bottle recall. They followed the same strategy. They did nothing. So even if I'm using you two guys to monitor, do I need to get in there? Do I need to engage? Do I need to be part of the conversation? Or am I just staking myself out well, to be, one, to be one, eaten? One, one more important thing. 
is the influence rate of the users, of the social media users. Imagine that a company has the social media accounts and it has uh, one, 100,000 people who are just talking about him. It, the, the brand couldn't just manage all of them. So we have a, we have a strategy that, uh, that the influence rate of the users, which is a, a calculation from the uh, Twitter's followers or Facebook fan page or the other stuff. So if they are, uh, if they, they are the, over the threshold, so they just start to, to, to handle with that people. Because imagine that a person is just talking about you, your brand, and in in um, in very horrible strategy, and it has a Twitter account and it has uh, three three hundred thousand followers. So can you imagine what can what can happen to you? So this is this is maybe much more uh, influencer than the TV advertisement in some cases. Okay, so in terms because, of what because it it is a it is a direct message. In terms of what you're doing then, when you automate engagement, don't you lose um, the human touch? Don't you lose um, the reality of it? Don't you lo lose, I, I don't know, what's the word? Um, respect for your consumers? Well, uh, this is the strategy that uh, has to be done by, by the big companies because they cannot deal with each one of these eight, 800,000 people. They have to prioritize that. The priority is just uh, much more on the threshold, on the upper threshold value. It is Alex, let's look at it from a different perspective at least. If you have your own Facebook page and that's, all what you that's the only thing you care about, then yes, hiring two people who are community managers responding to everybody and figuring out what they want is a, an okay approach. Where are your people where are you, and where are your, your consumers is the question you have to start with. If they're on Twitter, then same thing. You know, you, you put up a search and you keep refreshing. You're fine. Uh, and the advantage of sorry, sorry, just to, just to kind of give yeah, you yeah. give you a bigger picture of this. The advantage of listening in general means that you're not just listening on Facebook and Twitter, and if you have a comment on YouTube or anywhere else, you're listening across all the forums that are out there. And there are, I don't know, if I can give you a number even, but there are tons of forums out there where people are talking and having their own side conversation between each other, where you're not even involved. This is what you, you're concerned about. You're concerned about who are they talking about. If you're handling X, X client, is somebody mentioning your competitor? And are they mentioning it so much that you're like, you know what, I have a problem because you know, clearly that other com competitor's campaign is triggering some reactions. Generally speaking, you don't listen to monitor disasters because disasters will come to you. I mean, you're definitely gonna hear about the disaster before you're gonna see it on some dashboard. Um, that's been the rule, at least so far as, as, as far as I'm concerned. You're listening because you need to know what your competition's doing. You need to know what your clients are asking for in general. What is the insight? I mean, what are you doing? You're automating keywords. You're not really reading what everybody's saying. But there are specific ways by which you can measure the positive tone, the negative tone. What is it that the context is being, is being mentioned? And that's how you start understanding what your consumers are asking for in order to, to be able to chart new communication tools, new marketing strategies, new, product, new products even. So when we, when we go back down the line, I mean, I can understand why at the front line, you know, you guys can help to monitor and to measure sentiment and all that kind of stuff. And that's, that's all lovely. I have an argument about actually RSS feeds and Google Alerts are a, a competition to that. But further down the line, what about getting a company to change its behavior in response to online criticism and critique? Because presumably that's what they need to do rather than just make some weasel words come out on Twitter. How do you then convince companies to change the way they behave in response to customer concern or even customer feedback? How do you come to the client and convince them or how does the client actually realize that there's a problem because I, at the end I of the day, both. I guess both. At the end of the day, there's, there's a lot of clients who will never be convinced until they face a serious disaster. But there's a lot of other clients who are, as, as, the more you see disasters happening, even when it's not yours, the more you learn from those mistakes. Um, same thing with having flash websites, same thing with having so many bad practices online. Um, customer care will and has been and is, only, is gonna be the only way to deal with people online. Um, social media will become the new way of customer service. So if, we, if you put social media into the CRM, aren't you just changing the platform and just uh, dis disempowering us in the way that you did with the CRM? No, no. With no, the call center, no. you know, a whole load of twin turns tweeting away, and every time I say, I hate your company, they just say, oh, DM me, and we'll take it offline and <laughs> okay, get rid of you. The, the, the social CRM part is very related with your previous question. If you just pass the social CRM from the traditional CRM, 
you just have to be ready for three or four times more questions, more uh, criticism. Okay, this is this is uh, this is uh, in in Turkey that the customers we have worked with. Uh, this may be 16 times much more criticism and the questions they have to deal with when they pass through the social CRM. Because when you pass through the social CRM, the people that you have touched are increased. But, and, but and, my, and, and, and my point is, increased. the social CRM, isn't that inherently antisocial? <laughs> Look at it this way. Social no. CRM to CRM is more or less having your brochure and then putting it online. So if you just say well, CRM no, 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 web, is web, <laughs> Websites having my brochure and putting it online, surely. Yes, that's what I'm saying. But, but that's really not what it is today. Having, if your website is just a brochure online, you're in big trouble. If your CRM program is having a Facebook page where you're not saying anything and you're just waiting for people to comment or reply to them, you're also in trouble. Being able to say social CRM or to actually be you're standing up and saying, I have social CRM, has a lot of implications. It's not just saying, oh yeah, I have a CRM program and by the way, I'm on Facebook. It means that you have to be able to integrate and analyze every single follower that you have, figure out what the age gr group is, what languages do they speak, where, which, what country are they present in, how do you, be able, how you then communicate to them. CRM is actually much more challenging when you go into social as opposed to the other way around because CRM is all about life cycle based communications. I know that you've bought my car, a car from my brand two months ago, so now I know how to talk to you now. You know, I'm, I'm going to tell you, by the way, if you need to so know something, do it. I'm not going to tell you, oh, if your engine blows up when you just bought the car. But like five years later, I need to tell you that. How do you manage this kind of communication on a Facebook page where you don't know who's who? That's where the challenge is, and that's why you need listening. You need to start getting more of this information, putting them back into your database so that you can treat people the way they expect to be treated. But is that, is that well, something it, you put out into the CRM department, or is that something that needs to become a company-wide discipline? It depends on how big the, the agency is. Somebody like P&G clearly requires people to be in-house because they handle so many brands. Other brands have only one brand or two, or a small marketing team. Some, some, some agencies we, we've seen um, work with, some, some uh, clients we've seen work with PR uh, agencies to handle the social media. Others use media, like media agencies. Others use digital agencies. It, the, the role of who does it is no longer that important because at the end of the day, all the channels are talking to each other. Who does the population or the final approval on the communication plan or on the strategy is clearly the client. Mustafa, right. very quickly before I hand over to the floor, for, for your platform, how do you handle Arabic? Because I've yet to see one automated solution that properly handles Arabic. Yeah, that, that's, that, 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 this is the big question. Well, uh, we just act locally. Uh, we have new business started in Poland, in Romania, and in Macedonia. And uh, we have the Arabic language support, but I said language, because the sentimental and the semantic is not ready yet. So we here uh, try to find some real strong partners and who is just special in this language and in these brands and in this market. So we, we are just... Uh, uh, Act, as I said, act locally, so find a local partner and uh, just serve the local market in, in, in that country. This gotcha. Strategy. Can I ask the room, has anybody got any questions, any points and to I, make? I think, I, think I, 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 I should say one more thing. The social CRM is social. It is a very good question. So I have, one, I have uh, two words for that. Uh, well, with the social CRM, imagine that you are the bank, okay? If you are the bank, you got all of the formal information for the customer, but not the social information. You do not know what color does he like or which, uh, which uh, music style does he listen. He, he doesn't know about this. But the social media stuff, we can just organize this and we can serve this information to the bank or to, 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 to any, any other company. So it is really the socialization. I mean, but, but how does that help a bank to engage with its customers? I mean, okay, I get all this information. I know my customers like punk rock and 40% of them are women and 50% of them like green and 15% uh, of them think that the, the government's rubbish. I, I know all that about them, but actually when they phone up to complain their credit card's lost or stolen and it's mishandled, I'm still going to handle it in the same old-fashioned way again, aren't I? Yeah. That's true, but you, you use the information so that you for other channels. I'm just going to really ignore people I know a lot more about. Not really. <clears throat> Again, b being able to identify the information of your clients doesn't necessarily immediate, require immediate implications on your customer service. It, it actually Im improves your marketing department. It, the information can go back to the marketing and say, okay, if, if everybody who likes this punk, this bank is into punk rock, why don't we sponsor a no, punk but, rock but, concert? But that's, part, that's part of the whole problem, surely, that, that I thought we were all setting out to address with this wonderful new toy called the internet. It is that 
send the information back to marketing who are going to sit on it and still parrot out the same boring old like things. It. Customer service is the one place where the pain should be felt and they never feel it because it gets caught in the CRM or in the social CRM. Well, I can, I, I I, I, I can give one, one more example for that. Uh, well, uh, the people, uh, well, the construction firm, one of the construction firm in Turkey, we are just uh, doing the business, the, the, the new business. We sell houses from social media, from digital media. But why? But how? Um, for instance, I am just planning to buy a house. Yeah, I just don't, don't have the enough money. I have half of them, and for, for, for the other half, I'll just uh, get get some mortgage or the other stuff. And the company just on the fly creates a new campaign specific to him. Okay, this is the touch for the end user, the, the, the direct touch for the end user. Okay, I want to check this out to the audience. Where's Doreen Sabah? Where's Doreen? You're tweeting there. Can we get a microphone to her? Sorry, she's a bit, bit of a way away. This is my trick, anti-social moderation. <laughs> Hi guys, okay. I'm really you, you sorry I was so well mean in the tweets, but like it's how we all feel. Right? Um, so tell me, you, you, you were saying on Twitter that you didn't feel you were getting good case studies. What do you mean? Yeah, give us one case study where you implemented social CRM and you actually like found this little quirky factoid about your uh, consumers and then you used it in your marketing or you used it to solve like an operational issue that you have every time in your organization there's there's hundreds of cases but they're very specific to the industry I'll give you an yeah, example that is that is one. famous worldwide um, and we're talking about being able to figure out what to do Intel and I know somebody from Intel was here before maybe he could he can shed some more light about this a couple of years ago Intel had a struggle on their social media page because nothing that they said was interesting to anybody at all. I mean, not because Intel is not interesting as a brand, but because what are they going to talk about? They're not, they don't really sell things. They empower other, you know, manufacturers to, to be able to do that. And, and they, they had chips. a... Sorry? They sell chips. Yeah, but don't, they don't talk to consumers. And having a social page requires you to have, and consumers are not businesses. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, one of the com community managers, one of the moderators, not even exact science, this person is probably just somebody who gets paid to fill up and copy and paste something into that page, decided to say, so how is everybody doing today? That post had so many replies because they realized that, you know what, these people are still humans at the end of the day. When we come up with this commercial or message or SMS or whatever, it is so impersonal. What we have to understand in social CRM is that it has to be very personal. It doesn't matter that, you know, somebody who's a multinational who has X amount of billions of dollars in revenue cannot talk that way. You need to talk that way. These are the things that we're still learning every day. Do we listen to um, what competition is doing and react in, in a second? No. Have we had cases where our comp competitors have reacted in seconds? Yes. Were they, were they with online advertising? Yes. Were they on, on social media? Yes. They're everywhere. How do, how do people know about it? It could be through listening. It could be somebody's actually sitting down and looking at your page all day and has nothing else to do. It doesn't matter. What, what matters is that thinking of it from a case perspective, the only thing that you probably need to take out, out of this is that Listening is, is going to be very important very soon because of the fact that it's going to be technically and, 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 and resource-wise impossible to manage all this information that's being set out there in, in, in the world on all the, the blogospheres out there and on all social media. Whether this is going to be capitalized on and used to the perfect uh, method possible, not anytime soon. I mean, CRM programs today don't even work. The key so, question is going to be not so much listening as whether you have the sincerity to act on what you're hearing. That's true. Uh, any other points from the room, very briefly, because we're going to have to uh, to break up soon. Mr. Joe Adabasi is in the room. I'm just taking a picture of you. Sure can. <laughs> any other points from the audience before we, we gentlemen at the back there? I'll keep the mic guys nice and fit. Hi. Um, Hello. I'm not sure if you've had uh, experience with clients entering social media recently, but it can be really tough to change the paradigm of thinking and behaviour between traditional media and social media. Um, how do you actually uh, convince your clients or management to, uh, to adopt uh, can the I, new Can ways I ask you thinking? why you say that? Are you finding clients are resistant to the whole idea of social media? Um, not really. It's not really about resistance, but it's about uh, being formed for so many years into traditional media and tra traditional media thinking. And, right. you know, having a rough time transposing this into, into the new media reality. 
Well, I have I have one video for that. Okay, my two years uh, <coughs> nephew is just using this this one iPad. Okay, with with close eye, and he, he she, she can write anything on it, and she can do anything on it. So I just I just showed this video to them and say that. Imagine if two years old girl can do this on this, this on this iPad. So imagine uh, what will she do in the next five years or ten years? You just need to uh, monitor them in the digital media because when when it comes to traditional media, uh, it it just uh, was in the social media, and after that the traditional media get the data. And this is the strategy. This is the main thing. Uh, very briefly, because we, we really have run out of time. Um, Fauzi, um, this is something you, you work with these clients all the time. Mm -hmm. what's, what's, what's the silver bullet? Is there a silver bullet? Is there something that you've managed to do with a client that's you know, made them change their minds, that's made them more aware of this, that you can help us all with? Definitely, because the first thing that we do when we, when we go to the client is that we hear, we hear what they have to say. And Ten years ago, it used to be a client comes to you and says, do I need a website? Maybe I don't need a website. Well, some of the advice that you give them is, maybe you don't need a website. If Masafi has a Flash website, oh, flash. I got flash. <laughs> if, if Masafi has that flashy butterflies website who they think is pretty, what they don't understand is that nobody can get to it. So clearly, they don't need a website. Might as well not have one then. Um, the same thing applies to, to social media. If you don't have the budget to maintain and listen to everybody who's talking on your page and, and figure out how you can respond to them, don't have a Facebook page. If you cannot afford to have community managers, content creators, strategic planners, and, and everybody need, who, sitting down and figuring out what do we need to say, please don't. Do final, not open up that channel. Final point. Would you counsel cannibalizing the traditional advertising budget to help fund the social media budget? Definitely. Thank you very much. And the panel.